Hello pilots, a lot of accident, incident, even the pilot die because they don't really know how high their airplane can fly. Today I'm Gama Guyari. I'm happy to share with you how to avoid this kind of accident, how to make your flight even safer than before by making a proper flight planning with adequate knowledge. Then we can discuss, you can comment below how to uh, be aware about this kind of um, terrain accidents, all right? So stay tuned, subscribe this YouTube, and share to all the aviation enthusiasm in the world. Welcome to 14 Day Pilot Flight Academy, folks. Now, we're gonna talk about how high this little Cessna or maybe the multi-engine airplane can fly. Every airplane has their limitation. We call that a surface ceiling. The surface ceiling is the maximum density altitude that the airplane can steadily climb maximum at 100 feet per minute climb rate. Normally, when you at the low level elevation, low level altitude, the airplane can fly really high, really steep like this. But when you fly or you're taking off from the very high elevation, let's say your airport around the mountain like Lake Tahoe, Mammoth Airport, uh, Lukla Airport at Nepal, um, Papua Airport in Indonesia, normally the elevation will be like 6,000 to 9,000 feet. Small airplane with the piston engine, they don't have a pretty good performance. Their climb rate will be really, really sluggish. It's maybe like 100 feet per minute climb rate and really danger. That's why as a pilot, we want to know exactly what is the performance of our airplane. Never fly without knowing more, very deep understanding about your performance. Let me introduce you to the wildest killing machine of all pilots. We call that a density altitude. The density altitude is very different with the pressure altitude that normally we can see that from our pressure altimeters like this. The density altitude is invincible. We can simply say that the density altitude is the altitude that the airplane thinks where they are. But by definition, is the pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperature. When we talk about the temperature, it means the pressure altitude will be adjusted with the non-standard temperature. What is the standard temperature? The standard temperature based on international standard atmosphere is the 15 degrees Celsius. The temperature more than 15 degrees Celsius or lower than 15 degrees Celsius will impact your altitude. Okay, so let's take an example. Let's say the airplane, the little Cessna now sits on 1000 feet elevation airport. Maybe it's a little bit higher than the sea. Uh, it's a 1000 feet elevation. Then the temperature is hot. Okay, when the temperature maybe at summer is become like 30 degrees Celsius, the airplane will not think that they are sit on 1,000 feet. It feels that, hey, pilots, I am now at 3,000 feet altitude instead of 1,000 feet altitude. Then everything, every performance will change. What are they? Remember, C-A-L-T, CALT. The C is the climb rate. When the airplane take off from 1,000 feet elevation with the temperature, let's say, 35 degrees Celsius, okay, just put any number, random number, then it, it caused the increment of the altitude become 3,000. Now, the climb rate, the C, the first C is the climb rate, the climb rate will not be as good as when the temperature is low. Let's say the airplane will sit at 1,000 feet with the temperature 15 degrees Celsius. It can easily climb with 800 feet per minute. Okay, it's really steep like that. But now when the temperature becomes 35 degrees Celsius, then the airplane will be really hard to climb 800 feet per minute. Especially when it takes off from 1,000 feet elevation with the hot temperature, it feels that the real altitude is 3,000, is no longer 1,000 then the climb performance, the climb rate will get affected. When you fly the twin engine airplane, it has two engines. The problem is the single engine surface ceiling is not as much as the twin engine surface ceiling. When you lose one engine, the airplane can only maintain the altitude uh, like five to 6,000 feet. And then the airplane has to descend to the lower altitude that the airplane can hold 
uh, their performance. Okay, the twin engine service ceiling is another story. But the conclusion: the higher the temperature, okay, that means the higher density altitude, that the lower performance you get. Number two is the air speed. The hotter the weather, the less dense the air because the air molecules now expands. Okay, then it will cause your true air speed become faster. You have to fly faster to maintain the same indicated air speed. Of course, then when you land at any airport, you will land with a higher air speed. That's another problem for you. Number three. L, the landing distance will be longer, okay? The, the main problems for airport like Lukla, uh, the airport elevation is 9,500, but the airport only has 1,700 feet runway length. It's really challenging and one of the most dangerous airports in the world. And the last one is T, is the takeoff distance. Remember, the higher temperature, the higher the elevation, your takeoff distance will be longer. The problem comes when you fly in solid IMC, instrument meteorological condition. You cannot see outside, it's completely cloudy, okay? And in front of the airport, you have a lot of trees, maybe electrical cables, mountain buildings or anything. Then the instrument standard procedures require you to climb at specific very high or steep climb gradients. The weather is hot now and you're IMC. The main problem, if you are not really understand how to calculate the density altitude, how to find your climb rate, how to read your manual about the performance, there is a huge probability you're gonna crash one day. Because when we go for holiday with our family, with friends, uh, taking the small airplanes, we want to bring a lot of things, cameras, GoPros, uh, bags, clothes, and we tend to load the airplane at the top level of the maximum takeoff weight. The temperatures become really hot, then you're IMC. You climb without knowing, without seeing outside, then suddenly you end up die because you hit something. So that happened a lot. Can you believe me? That's a lot. Even NTSB report um, shows that the percentage of the control flight into terrain, the CFIT, it's really huge. That's why in the operator like 121, the airlines or the charter flight, they consistently train all the pilots and operator about the alarm. Okay, the approach landing uh, accident reduction. It's about the CFIT. How to make sure that you are not hitting something by understanding more to the density altitude and make a proper flight planning. Let's see one of the accident sample that we're gonna avoid forever. Reports state that the pilot suffered the worst injury, including a broken jaw. We believe you and me, we want to avoid this kind of accident. We call that a Stinson crash back then 2012. The problem was the pilot wasn't aware about the density altitude. They took off from 6,300 feet elevation, but the density altitude itself is become 9,167 feet density altitude. It means, again, the airplane feel, the airplane sense that it takes off from 9,000 feet instead of 6,000 feet. The pilot was loaded the airplane at a maximum takeoff weight without knowing the obstacle in front of him. The problem was the airplane Stinson model 108-3, 165 horsepower, barely can climb and end up hit the trees. But lucky, there's no casualty. The pilot and the passenger, they were survived, but the pilot experienced extreme injury. So, pilots, Today, we learn about the density altitude. We know exactly, even though in the POA, the airplane states that it's climbed, it could fly to 14,000 feet. But remember, the 14,000 feet is the density altitude and it is not pressure altitude. Always prepare your flight, always check the temperature, check your runway length, check the obstacle, and finally calculate 
the maximum climb rate your airplane can give to you. No matter you fly the little Cessna or you fly the 737, basically they are same. The response to the density altitude, then it will give you a better life because you're gonna clear all the obstacle. Thank you very much for watching. So guys, to know more about our past oral exam system program, please come to our website, www.14daypilot.com or our Instagram, 14daypilot. We also more than happy to welcome you as our students for accelerated private pilot program, instrument rating, a commercial, multi-engine, ADB, flight instructors, or anything you need in the flight training. Just visit us and let's fly together.